first, but I would like to introduce myself first. My name is Data, and the first question I usually came across and people ask me why I call Data. Yeah, I could tell you now. And because I, not, uh, I love a movie called Star Trek, one of the characters in Star Trek is called Data, and you could pronounce it in two sounds, data or data, depends on where you're from. If you're from Australia, it's usually called data. But don't hit me, please. Anyway, um, I have been involved in uh, many roles in Hong Kong U. Uh, I got my bachelor's degree and PhD in Hong Kong U, and also, I'm also the vice chairperson of Yan Arm Group of Hong Kong U Associations. Yeah. Alumni Association, and also I'm the standing committee member of Hong Kong U Convocations. I held the two Star Weekend at Hong Kong U last year, and also a hackathon called the Android Hack at Hong Kong U. And yeah, and today the topic is called Light in the Dark. I would like to tell you something about my dark size first. Uh, at Hong Kong U, I was firstly admitted in the electronic and communication engineering uh, for one year. Uh, I found this very boring, so I transferred to study physics. Uh, in 2009, I got my Bachelor of Science, double major in physics, finance, and, and a minor in astronomy. In 2014, I got a PhD in physics at Hong Kong U. And um, I could tell you I'm purely Hong Kong U person, so I'm not fit CUHK because I, my, my, my CMAT is not that good to get CUHK to admit me. Uh, however, I have been spending a lot of time in physics indeed. Um, before, my getting, before getting in Hong Kong U, I was needed to be a research student in Polytechnic USD and also the city west of Hong Kong uh, in my Form 6 and Form 7 life. So I spent most of the free time in the physics research laboratory. Uh, this two year experience somehow a foundation of my research and also the foundation of my te technology stuff now. Uh, because uh, I never think of I would be a physicist when I was from five, because I got a E in physics, CE. Yeah, this is very iconic indeed. Um, be, uh, because uh, my C is not that good in the first time, I just got 12 marks in it. And I really f f seriously think why I got that smart, because I spent most of my time in paying in this, and also daydreaming. So after a serious consideration and think the problem, so I tried to take it second trial, so I get a better mark now, this is 19 mark. And, and this is much better in the second trial for my physics. I got a B. And I find there's some talent and also some interest for me in physics. So I put more effort on, on it. So in my A-level, I got an A finally. Yeah, it also buy me a ticket to get in, in the Hong Kong U rather than COHK. Yeah, but but I, 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 I could tell you a secret in this. Uh, my, I have been spending some time in CU because my ex-girlfriend during my UST, uh, she was staying in CHK, so I understand how, uh, the, how far is the distance between Ma Liu and Bo Fu Lam in this. <laughs> this is another story. Yeah. Uh, for my uh, PhD, um, I study a few called biophysics. It's using the law of physics to study biology. Uh, for my research, I investigating the, uh, how a single cell to evolve to, be, to a complex uh, biological system like human by considering thermodynamics. However, after two years studies, my supervisor suddenly passed away. So I have to force that to change the project to study a uh, semiconductor. And the, this incident is quite hurt me indeed because that supervisor I spent many time with, uh, much time with him. Uh, but once I think the experience of my supervisor experience when they are young, this challenge is not that big deal indeed. Uh, these two supervisors somehow a light side in my life indeed. 
I could share, 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 share their story to you. Uh, Professor Stephenson Fong uh, is my second uh, PhD supervisor. And I, I am talking about him first because it fit the topic of film today, Light in the Dark. Because he is the first visually impaired per, uh, uh, graduate from Oxford University, uh, over a thousand histories of his opening. He got a Bachelor of Science, Master of Art, Doctor, uh, PhD in Oxford, and he even uh, got that a honorable degree from uh, US, uh, University of Oxford uh, called Doctor of Science because of his academic contributions. He started to teach in Hong Kong U at uh, Light He AT, and uh, he got the professor uh, professorship later, and I was uh, I'm the I'm I'm his last PhD student in this, and he now retired and back to UK to stay. And his story is very inspiring. I would like to share share, share this, this with you now. Uh, firstly, he is not born in band but he got a visual impaired because of genetic disease. He could see things till the primary sex indeed. And because of his, um, his vision is deteriorating uh, till primary sex, so his academic performance is not that good. Uh, so he, 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 he often uh, got last or second last in the examinations. So long story short, uh, so he uh, transferred to the uh, Ambassador uh, School and Home for the Visual Impaired to repeat primary sex and study there till form three. However, in 1970, in Hong Kong, there's no inclusion education. So the highest academic qualification for a visual impaired person they got is form three. So my professor is not that uh, satisfied. So he bought some uh, Bell book past paper for the O level and A level of UK and self study in Hong Kong. So he got some A's in subject. So he even got a, a admitted in Oxford University and got a scholarship. And he then became the first visual impaired PhD and bachelor student in Oxford. Uh, Professor Fung once told me that uh, for a visual impaired student studying in university and get graduate. It's just like to land into the moon. Uh, he shared some problem he faced uh, at that time. First, there's no uh, official uh, book for the visual impaired persons in the university. So he needed to recruit helpers to read the book verbally for him to study. And now it's much better because uh, now we have the computer to have a voice sofa in mobile phone and even iPhone to help, help the visual impaired persons to use the computer and smartphone. And also in 1970, computer was not very, very popular indeed. And there, is the, there was even no personal computer and smartphone. And the digital calculator was not also common indeed. So uh, luckily, there are some technicians who help, help him to modify some equipment for the uh, physics experiment to just by uh, digital uh, um, uh, uh, monitor just will be emit sound for the, some specific reading. And the most important or most challenging problems uh, my professor faced is, uh, is people because, uh, because the requirement in all sorts, they need to conduct the experiment in pairs. But the, I dare say one student asked it to my professor, but that student afraid the situation of my professor will, will affect his uh, academic performance, so he left. But luckily, uh, there's a guy called Chris uh, David Billing. Uh, he stepped in and volunteered to be a partner of my professor, and both of them finally got first class honor in physics. Yeah, that is very amazing. Uh, Professor Billing uh, is the expert in positron physics. Uh, he got the first class honor degree in Oxford with my Professor Fung, and also he got a PhD in University of London and become the lecturer in the UCL. And because after the bachelor studies, Professor Fung and Professor Billing still contact uh, with academic exchange, so uh, somehow Professor 
from Ben Professor Billing to the Hong Kong YouTube start teaching in 1987, and he became the professor of physics in 2007. Uh, professor Billing was my original PhD supervisor. I spent so many time with him, around five to six years indeed, because he, is, uh, he was also my um, first year summer project supervisor, second year project supervisor, and also my five year project supervisor. He is very faithful Christian indeed, and he's the best teacher I ever met, and he's a a good husband and also a good father. However, unfortunately, on 18th of June uh, in 2010, uh, he died of a heart failure because of uh, he uh, would, uh, would like to save his father uh, when they are holiday in in the beach in his hometown. So because of the pass away of Professor Billing, I have to swap my project and also my supervisor. But this thing is very tricky indeed. Um, before Professor Billing uh, passed away, he applied a research grant with Professor Fong. Uh, the concept idea is, uh, was come from Professor Billing, but Professor Billing uh, would like to give the, all the paperwork and even the land of, and, and title of the project to Professor Fong, because Professor Fong is mainly working on the paperwork indeed. And after a serious considerations, um, I would like to take up the last project of Professor B. Leng. I would like to finish something that he left. So I changed up my project, even there's a different feel. And after my getting PhD, I, would like, I have to think of what should I do and, and what I have to do after getting a PhD. Uh, there are only a few research focused students could be a professor at the end. Do you want to guess the number? How many PhD students will finally get a 10 new professorship? One, two, one, of, one out of 100 or one out of 200? Yeah, I could tell you the number. Uh, for the science PhD students, According to the Institute of Physics from UK, there are only 0.5% PhD students. They finally will get the tenured professorship. Uh, so in this number, it makes me think I'm not that competitive to stay in academic. Uh, if I do so, I have to leave Hong Kong indeed, but I would like to stay with my family. So I found a pin tag. Uh, Pintech is a 3D printing solution company. Uh, they, uh, it's, we mainly do three things. The first thing is uh, we, we are the 3D printer manufacturer. In addition to making the normal plastic type 3D printer, we also making the food and chocolate 3D printer in it. And also we are the 3D printer, uh, digital fabrication educator. We teach the people and the students to use the digital fabrication tools like 3D printer, laser cutter, and CNC machine to make robot run and even device for virtual reality. It somehow upgrade the traditional design and technology courses. The last thing is we do the 3D printing related application like 3D scanning and help people get the 3D model. And last year, I, uh, my, my partner and I have research and development a new type of 3D printer. It's somehow faster than the traditional one, about one third. And also, we develop a remote control system that let teachers to control several printer by using one uh, computer. And also, we develop a printing resume system. Even after power cut, the printer could be resumed the printing. And also, we develop a filament error detector. Even there's a, some filament jam or cutting, the painting will be resumed after you resolve the problem. Yeah, luckily, uh, my company was invited to be interviewed in the Cyberport and also Qinghai eHub last year. And we got funded by the Microsoft, uh, sorry, uh, Cyberport Micro Fund and also the uh, TSSSUT through fund from Hong Kong ITC of Hong Kong government. And we also better from several angel investors in Hong Kong and China. 
Uh, I was luckily invited in many startup events, just like meeting with Elon Musk in the Hong Kong government hall, and also meeting uh, CY Learn and also the Lacrosse Yuan, the uh, chief of the ITB, and also invited to be one of the speakers in the Boomba Business Forum. And also my company was in my in interviewed by at least 10 TV programs and also 12 newspapers and magazines. And we also joined several exhibitions to promote our product and service. And it helped us to find the customer and also find the potential distributors. And uh, in the coming years, we would like to deal with a full 3D printer. Uh, we would like to solve a one problem because everyone will got birthday each year. And the cake shop, they will come across many customers. They would like to buy the birthday cake. The first problem, they would like to write a lamb and message on the chocolate page. But it was um, made up by uh, staff and labor intensive. I would like to use the 3D printer to make it more robotics. And also, I would like to uh, make the 3D printer to help the biotechnology. Because even in Hong Kong U and CHK, that's advanced institute, they are about medical or about te technical experiments, or have made up by the PhD and postdoc student for that mechanical and repetitive experiments. So I would like to transfer the Philippine technology to help them to make it automated. Uh, in addition to Philippine thing, I have been involved in several projects. I would like to cover it for you now. That's the first one, in 2012, uh, I developed a interlocking platforms to harvest the data from smartphone and also the open source hardware like a Juno and Raspberry Pi to help people to gather the data. And also, uh, last year, I developed a T-shirt. Uh, it is wearable, of course. And there's a display there uh, with LED. You could control the LED display with your smartphone in it. And you could pay game and send a, send a write a message on your T-shirt. I think it's cool, cool to go to cupping on Disco. And in addition to pure electronic project, I also involved some biotech or biohacking related project with some uh, student from the Faculty of Medicine in Hong Kong U. Uh, biohacking or color synthetic biology is kind of new things. It's similar to the electronics in it. In electronics, we have the standard electronic component like resistor, uh, transistor, capacitor, and inductor to form a very complex electronic device and even computer. In biohacking, we have similar idea. We have the standard biological system to help us to synthesize drugs, virus, and even new biological organism. I think it's a little bit crazy so for biohacking. So I make also, also make some normal project. And this is called a Pokemon, Pocket Monitor. It's long collective, uh, we show uh, a thermometer and also the monitor for the heartbeat for the babies because uh, you can, the baby can't tell whether he is in favor or he is very cold. So it's a very good device. Uh, I developed it with some fan in a hackathon. The last thing is I would like to tell you about the smart stick, uh, you, whether you could get, what is it? This is a uh, selfie stick, and I changed the head, not attach a phone, but attach a 3D printed device. Could you guess what it is for? Yeah, I could tell now. <laughs> it's for you to pay an octopus. I was forced up by my girlfriend now, the current one, uh, to make it for her, because she drive his, usually drive his car from car park. But in Hong Kong, uh, you have to pay the car park fee by, by, the, by paying the octopus. But her hand is quite short, so I have to make an extender for her. But somehow she, 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 she thinks that is very Portable, profitable indeed, but I doubt, but I forced it to make it for her. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, one little bit in innovation or, or invention of, of me. So that's all of my presentation today. Thank you.